Hi, I'm Jules from Class Car, and today we're at Silverstone, the home of British Motorsport. But why are we here? Well, we're going to be looking at three performance cars in three different price brackets, and we're going to be putting them through their paces on the famous tarmac. To make this comparison fair, they're all going to be wearing the same tyres, Devante, Pro Tour Sports. But what are the cars? Well, we're going to go and speak to three people in the know. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. I'm the editor of Performance BMW magazine, and I'm here to tell you why, if you've got about 10 grand to spend, you want an E82 135i. The first thing is the engine. It's a twin turbo or single turbo straight six. You either got the earlier N54 or the later N55. The N54 is a little bit more tunable because you've got the two turbos, you get a bit more power out of it. The N55 is a bit more reliable. This is like the perfect package. You're looking back to the times you had like the E46 M3, everything is a little bit smaller, a bit more compact, a bit better suited to like B roads. And you've got all that twin turbo power in a really nice compact package that's perfect for like a back road blast. Obviously, being a BMW, that means it's also the only rear-wheel drive car out of this trio. And that means if you want a more playful chassis and a more fun, involved driving experience, it's also the best choice because obviously your front wheels just do the steering and then the rear puts the power down. So that just means you've got a more involved, enjoyable driving experience with a 135i. Prices start at around £10,000. There's not that many 135s on the market, but there are some really nice ones out there. To the mid-teens, maybe a little less, you'll pick up a really nice example. Beyond the out-of-the-box performance, 306 horsepower, 295 pound-foot of torque, you've got the massive tunability. You really don't need to put a lot of effort into getting a lot of power out of it. The basic mods, downpipes, charge pipe, a map, maybe an upgraded intercooler, and you'll be high 300s. And then beyond that, if you want to go even more hybrid turbos, you'll be well over the 400 horsepower mark, and it'll be an awesome little car. Being the editor of Performance BMW, you might think I'd be a bit biased, and you'd be right, because if you're looking for a fun, fast, and easily modified car, if you've got 10 grand to spend, the 135i is the best choice. Hi, I'm Elliot from Performance CW magazine and I'm here to tell you why you should spend 15 to 20 grand on a Golf R. The beauty of the car is obviously it's a great tunable engine but even in standard form around about 300 brake horsepower is plenty of power to get yourself into trouble but four wheel drive system keeps you in check. It's not permanent four wheel drive so for most of the time the car can be fun and nimble if you break traction or you get into trouble, the Haldex system will kick in and it's just that safety net, which for me, when you drive quite enthusiastically, it's just nice to know it's there if you need it. The earlier cars, there were reliability issues with the turbo. So probably the car you were looking for is like a 65 plate upwards. It had a slightly different turbo and a more reliable turbo. In terms of tuning, you, you know, even a simple stage one remap, you know, could easily get 400 brake horsepower, which again, in, in a car like that is, is just a perfect, amount obviously people do go further and do go more extreme but for me 400 horsepower in a car with all-wheel drive it's a great platform between 15 and 20 grand you can't really get a better hot hatch 300 brake horsepower out the box easily tunable you've got four-wheel drive system there to keep you out of trouble great residual values and german build quality need to say more My name's Jamie King, I'm editor of Fast Four magazine. I've been asked to tell you what I would spend 25 to 30 grand on. And the answer is the Mark III Focus RS. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, it's 345 horsepower, 345 pound foot of torque, pretty damn quick as standard. Then, as all Fords, it's supported by an absolutely phenomenal tuning scene. So you can get that up to, well, five, 600 horsepower if you wanted to. Secondly, the handling, fantastic out of the box, brilliant on B roads, a roads, motorways, does everything you want it to, and then bring it to a track day and have some real fun. And on top of all that, it's still actually a really practical car. When the Mark III came out, people moaned about it having five doors rather than three doors, but actually that makes it a really practical car. You can still use it for family stuff, but then you can take it to shows, events, track days, do what you want. It's basically the complete package. But don't take my word for it. Let's find out the guy who owns it. Oh, I do, it's mine. I'm Jamie King, editor of Fast Forward Magazine, and this is my Mark III Ford Focus RS. 
I actually bought this car from brand new. Uh, funny enough, it was at Silverstone. I turned up and did the press day for the Mark III Focus RS. Went home and the next day ordered that one. So I was actually looking to buy a Mark III Focus ST because they did an estate one and I wanted an estate car. And then when I went on the press launch, I drove one of these, drift mode, launch control, the way they handle, it's just fantastic. It was the best board available at the time. That's why I bought one. Obviously working for Fast World Magazine, can't really stand around with a standard car for too long. So after probably 500 miles, it first of all had a Mountune M380 map on it. It's now running the uh, Mountune M400 upgrade, which is their 400R software. It's got an uh, upgraded intercooler, sports cat, Mountune's exhaust system, different air intake. Power at the minute is 400 horsepower and around about 400 pound foot at all. Also got some handling upgrades on it where it's got different brakes, the different springs, it's got h &R springs on it, different roll bars. Um, and obviously it's now got uh, Devante tyres on as well. I haven't had the Devante tyres on that long, but first thing thoughts, very good. I don't think I actually have one favourite modification. For me, it's more how it comes together as a package. If you press me to say what's your favourite one thing, I'd probably say it was the M400 software, just because it makes such a difference to the way the car drives. But for me, it's more about everything and the way it all comes together. And next on the list for me, it's probably going to be forged engine internals, because I've gone as far as I can realistically with bolt-on mods. Next step is going to be, unfortunately, expensive rods and pistons. But when they're in place, big turbos, sky's the limit. My name is Ryan Holmes, I own a BMW E82 135i. I've owned the car since 2016. Um, I chose this make and model of car, um, it was the shape of it, the overall styling of it, and then the engine as well, and how tunable it actually is. The car wasn't standard when I bought it, so I had turbos done, uh, intercooler, diff. I put bigger turbos on it, full custom exhaust, upgraded all the bushes, new front arms, rear arms camber arms, coilovers, braces, basic engine mods to help it breathe better. My favourite mod is the turbos for the power delivery and the sound. The Devante Pro Tourer tyre seems really good so far. It feels like it's pushing you along instead of snapping. It seems to be a good all-round tyre, both on track and on road. I'm Alec Doyle, I'm the PR and Partnerships Manager for Devante Tyres, and this is our Mark 7 Golf. We've been using this car now for about 18 months with Pro Tourer. It's obviously a very popular high performance car, the Golf, and it's it's a great test bed for you know a new UHP product. It's a completely standard Golf R apart from the body kit from our partners at Sterling Automotive Design, but essentially it's the same Golf R that we would have used in the development of the tyres. Devante's Pro Tourer Sport tyre is our premium UHP tyre. Um, we launched it earlier this year and it's been developed to give drivers a greater sense of control, um, to translate more driver input you know, to the vehicle and create a sort of an at one sensation of driving between the driver and the vehicle. So there you go, three cracking cars. You've heard from the owners, you've heard from the experts. Now it's really up to you to see what one you would go for.